Hey, hey, welcome to this video with a cool, fun, or overall unique fact about every country in the world. First country on this list alphabetically seen is Afghanistan, located between Central and South Asia. Some of you may know that the current flag and screen is not the one supported by the government. They use a white with black one. But in this video, I kind of want to shy away from negative politics where possible and just have an overall fun experience. So as a guideline, we're going to use the UN for inclusion. There's a big chance you've seen this photo before, Afghan girl. It's often cited as the most famous photo in the world for those green eyes that she had. Sharbat Gula graced the cover of National Geographic magazine in 1984 and after 17 years they traced her back by technology that recognized her eyes. Throughout the years she'd been traveling between Afghanistan and Pakistan as a refugee and her story kind of stands symbol for what a lot of people in Afghanistan are going through. Today however though it has a slightly better ending because nowadays she lives happily with her family in Italy. Let's go to country number two in the south of Europe which is Albania, probably best known for its females, Mother Teresa and its singers of Albanian descent. And do you know the correct way of saying Albania in Albanian? It's actually Shipri, which means lands of the birds, eagles to be precise. And to stick on the topic of birds, chances are big that you've seen a scarecrow in life. Well, in Albania, it's quite common to have a scarecrow or a doll or any other object. And this is not to scare off birds, but to wear off jealousy from neighbors, or as they call it, the evil eye. Let's talk about something lighter. In North Africa, we have Algeria, which as a national animal has the fennec fox. Cute, right? Well, the fennec fox is also the animal that stood model for fennecus the Pokemon, which then kind of makes me wonder, can we say that Algeria is the only country with a Pokemon as a national animal? Next country is a very tiny one, Andorra, which is sandwiched between France and Spain. It's probably best known as the place where people can do their very cheap booze purchases. Seriously, it's under 5% tax. And it's the only country that has Catalan as their only official language. But do you actually know who is really ruling Andorra? Well, it starts with the Vatican, who appoints a cardinal from Spain that becomes the Prince of Andorra. Now, another person involved is the President of France. Yes, he is also one of the princes. Andorra is a co-principality, the only one in the world. Also in the fact that it is the only country that has a head of state elected by another country. Now, yes, it's a ceremonial role, there is local government, but still, I'll leave it at this. Vive la République. Vive la France. Next country is on the west coast of Central and Southern Africa, Angola. Probably best known for two things, oil and diamonds. Let's talk about the latter one. Because I'm sure a few of you like diamonds. How about only 40% of the diamonds in Angola have been explored? Yeah, that's good to know for anybody looking to hunt down some diamonds, right? We're flying out to the Caribbean for next one, Antigua and Barbuda. This lesser known island nation in the Caribbean has two main islands. Antigua, which is the southern island and most populous one. An interesting point here is that they have the Pillars of Hercules, which is created by wind erosion over time. Just remember when you visit, the best view is from the water. In the north, we find Barbuda, which is kind of like the lesser known and lesser populated one. Its name, just like Barbados, comes from these long fig trees, which has like bearded roots. They actually also have this fruit coming from it. I wonder how this tastes on a sandwich or with cheese. <laughs> Does anybody know that? And from cheese, we're going to Mate, we're going to South America for Argentina. Country probably best known for, what is it? Football or maybe Evita Peron? And Argentina, not Disney, is also the place where the first animated feature film came from, El Apostol. In 1917, it was even a political satire, but unfortunately the tapes are burned and lost, so we're never going to be able to see it. Up next we go to the Caucasus area for Armenia, probably best known for having these two women that descended from it, and for monasteries, beautiful landscapes, it's also the place that has the oldest winery in the world. Good to know, right? Oh, and this famous green dollar, the ink, that color, was also invented by an Armenian. 
Down south we go for Australia, the country where apparently everything kills you. Nah, of course there's also koalas and kangaroos. But on a lighter note, it's also the country that invented the term selfie. And having done some research, I have to say, you Aussies really like your selfies. Let's stick with media in Central Europe. Austria has its own fair share of media personalities. And of course it's famous for its mountains. This village called Fis, which is close to Innsbruck in Tyrol, has its its own metro line. The metro line is the highest and shortest one in the world and the reason being is that every year thousands of tourists come to enjoy the sun and to enjoy the snow there. It is a holiday resort for winter sports. People just have loads of fun together. Up next we're going a little bit more east for Azerbaijan, better known as the country of fire. Now resources are very important for this country so they were the first to create an offshore oil platform which functions as an industrial industrial settlement. Now the craziest part about this is the location. It is in the middle of the Caspian Sea. And from one sea to another one, we're going to the Bahamas in the Caribbean, which took center stage on the Netflix and Hulu documentaries about Fire Festival. The Bahamas are so beautiful that over 30 movies have been recorded over there. Think about Flipper, Casino Royale and of course Pirates of the Caribbean. Up next we have another archipelago, this time in the Middle East. Bahrain consists of 50 natural and over 30 artificial islands. After gaining independence in 1971, the country moved more politically to the Middle East and started creating these sets of bridges to connect to Saudi Arabia. It's called Jisso Meleki Fadde, or in English as we say King Fad Causeway. Next we go to South Asia for Bangladesh, country that has the Royal Bengal Tiger as its national animal. And this building with a canal zigzagging through it recently got named the best building in the world. It's basically a hospital that is environment friendly. Oh na na, what is her name? We're going to Barbados, country inherently connected with Queen Rihanna of course. And in 2008 they actually had a one-off official Rihanna holiday. Although there was only one occurrence, it's not a public holiday today. Now there's a big discussion about what the founding country nation of rum is. It's definitely in the West Indies Caribbean area. However, what is for sure is that the oldest brand of rum actually comes from Barbados. So it seems fair to call them the country of rum. Interesting name though. Before we talk about Belarus in East Europe, I want to talk a little bit about the flag. This is the official flag since the half 90s. This is the flag that most people will say is their flag and not for no reason. Both flags have a history, but the white red white one has a longer history. However, the UN still recognize the one with the green label. This video is not to get political. I kind of want to shy away from it as much as possible. What I want to say is my vote is with the people and I hope for a lot of healing and this country gets getting what it deserves and need. Now do you know the hashtag undress and work? Maybe you don't. In 2016, however, Belarusians went all naked on request of their head of state after he told people to undress and work until you would sweat. If you go to Instagram, you'll find some funny pictures on this one. From East to West Europe for Belgium, country from the Red Devils, the Big Bang Theory, Belgian chocolate, Belgium fries, which are eaten like this by the way, not with ketchup but with mayonnaise, and of comics. This specific one shoots faster than his own shadow and if you like comics you probably read one or two of these throughout the year. Some of them have gotten so popular that they even turned into a full-fledged feature film. Up next we go to the tiny nation of Belize in Central America. Now it's also considered a Caribbean country because of its close proximity to the Caribbean Sea and because of cultural ties. Another thing that I personally didn't know is that it has a huge barrier reef. It's very beautiful, this part is called the Blue Hole and it's so intense and big that it's even visible from space. I also want to talk about this flag. I love all the symbolism behind it, but it almost makes it too complicated with over 12 colors to replicate, but maybe that's just me. We're going to West Africa to Benin, one of the two countries in the world that has voodoo as an official state religion, the other being Haiti in the Caribbean. Now, whilst voodoo is normal for most communities, taking pictures is not. For some communities, they consider it as stealing the soul. So make sure to get permission before taking photos. And if you do ever go, make sure to attend Vette de Voodoo, which is an annual celebration of voodoo culture and its tradition. 
Next country is the most highest elevated one in the world. It is Bhutan, which also is the most mountainous country in the world and the country that introduced the world to the gross happiness index. Now, earlier in this video, we spoke about how Albanians keep the evil eye out with teddy bears and Teletubbies. Bhutani people go over a very different route. And before I'll show you how they do it, let me explain you why they do it. They revere the divine madman, a saint who was known for his unorthodox methods of enlightening. Apparently, he was keen on wine, risky scriptures, dance, and above everything, women. He even got the title the saint of 5,000 women assigned to him. I will leave it to your imagination how he would bless women his teaching is still living on today you will see his quote thunderbolt of flaming wisdom painted on walls and even appearing gardens up next we go to the country of bolivia which is probably best known for having the beautiful salt lakes he didn't know bolivia had salt flats it's also the country that has a huge christ statue it's actually bigger than the one in brazil which is one of the seven world wonders what is interesting though that it's actually not the biggest one because it's smaller than the one in poland and the one in indonesia making it the third biggest statue of jesus in the world the statue also measures just over 33 meters without its pedestal. Well, why is this interesting, would you say? Well, the local community, which is Catholic, claim that this is only good because he lived over 33 years and a bit. And from there we go to a country that is not even 33 years old, Bosnia-Herzegovina in Europe. If you ever go there, make sure to visit Mostar. It has an east and a western side that represent all cultures of the country. And if you ever look for a marketing guy, look no further than this guy over here, Samir Osmanajic, who started talking about the pyramids of Bosnia, which he say are the biggest pyramids in the world. The fun part though is that archaeologists say they're just formated by nature, so they're fake pseudo-pyramids. Fake or real, it doesn't matter. Ever since people started hearing about it, tourism has boomed and people do go and visit them. Let's move on to the southern side of Africa, Botswana, where the archaeologists have a lot more good things to say. Specifically about the Sodillo Hills over here, which are sacred to locals and which is called a real-life Louvre for having some of the oldest drawings in the whole world. We're talking about over 20,000 years old. And we're going to talk about some more recent history with Brazil, the country where we have to talk about their football. They've won over five times and have participated at every World Cup since it's been taking place. It's just a fact that when you talk about Brazil, you talk about some of the most memorable moments in football. And of course the Amazon rainforest, which has an amazing biodiversity of animals, plants and indigenous people who live in traditional ways. And even though things are not perfect, worldwide seen, they have some of the strongest protections which are part of the constitution since 1988. And this over here is Snake Island. It's a small island off the coast of Sao Paulo. What makes the island special is that it's home to some of the most venomous and critically endangered species of the world. And that's why it's closed for the public, to kind of protect the people and the snakes alike. We're definitely not finished yet, so if you like this kind of content, just a quick plug here, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and let's just continue with the video. And next country is based on the island of Borneo in Southeast Asia, Brunei, which is probably most famous for having the biggest residential palace in the world, which is owned by the Sultan. Wow. It also has a very interesting geography. Basically, it has two separate parts, which only in 2020 got connected by a 30 kilometer bridge, which now connects the Temburong and Brunei Muara parts. And we're back in Europe for Bulgaria. Now, do you know this song? It was made famous by this woman over here, which I wonder if that's the name she was born with, but that doesn't matter. What is interesting about the song that it has been playing since 1977, together with the song of Mozart, orbiting the earth, reaching out to extraterrestrial life. Next country is a bit of an obscure one, not everyone has heard of Burkina Faso. The West African country though has a big hero assigned to it, Thomas Sankara, which is in the West dubbed as the Che Guevara. And for people of Africa, he is a voice of Pan-Africanism. He would speak out about corruption, around inequality amongst African leaders until he unfortunately got assassinated. 
And this is Princess Yeninga, the spiritual mother of the biggest ethnic group in Burkina Faso, the Mossi people. Her story is epic, legendary and kind of reminds me of Mulan, not in the kind of similarity story but the strength it has. I see a Disney movie coming up, she's well deserving of it. The next country on our list is also African and it's Burundi. It's a country that doesn't get a lot of attention unless it's for kind of like negative and political ways. And with this video, I really want every country to shine. So here we go with Burundi. I think the fact that most people will know is that they won a gold medal at the first time they participated at the Olympics. Even later, there was a silver medal added to the mix. I want to go a little bit deeper than that. Burundi has a very big rural population, which is declining, but it's still very influential in the culture. And cows in that culture play a significant role. A typical Kurundi greeting, and I'm probably butchering it, is a maisho. It kind of translates as, may you have herds of cattle, because cattles are a symbol of health, happiness, and prosperity. Next up is Cambodia, Southeast Asia, best known for Angkor Wat, the temple that even features in their flag. I think it should be a world wonder, but what I want to talk about is this snack. Yes, in a small area in Cambodia, people eat spiders fried. What do you think about having one of those in your mouth? Samina Mina Ee Waka Waka for Cameroon, the country that actually originated the song, not Shakira, sorry, bye girl. Cameroon has a lot going for itself when it comes to diversity. It speaks French, English, many local languages. And if we look at the geography, we have mountains, jungles, savannah, desert, everything is represented giving it the nickname Africa in Miniature. And before we move on, one shout out for Robert Miller for popularizing the celebration dance at football. What a legend. And now we've arrived in North America for the country of Canada, probably best known for ice hockey, the lovely supporters, friendly people, and the people who are always apologizing and sorry. Too much so in the state of Ontario, where being sorry led to, let's say, a lot of uncomfortable situations, to the point that they created the Apology Act, which is a legislative piece which kind of prevents people from getting into weird situations. Basically what it says is, when you are saying that you're sorry, Sorry, that doesn't mean by law that you are admitting guilt and thus have any legal obligations. We're swinging into Cabo Verde, the Cape Verde Islands that actually used to be uninhabited until the Portuguese arrived and settled on the island of Santiago. Today it's one of the smaller countries in the world but with a very strong culture, especially musically. Cesaria Evora, who has an airport named after her, is the face of Morna music which totally contrasts with Funana music. Which one do you prefer? And we're staying on the continent for Central African Republic, or CAR as it's better known. And we're gonna get a bit more scientific. It has a magnetic anomaly, one of the biggest one in the world. Basically, there is metal under the surface of the ground, which either comes from within as being pushed out, or some kind of meteorite has plunged its way into Earth. They still don't know where it's coming from. Back on planet Earth, north of Car, we find Chad, the 20th biggest country in the world, which is probably best known for its flag that is almost identical to that of Romania. I mean, all colors are a little bit different, but the main difference is in the blue part. While Romania has a regular blue color, Chad has a navy blue color. But that's more optical, because if you see this flag right here, would you guess what it is? It's a bit hard to tell, right? Another thing that it's famous for is the poor Lake Chad, which is kind of drying up throughout the years. Anyway, if you are ever in Chad, make sure to try Chad jus de fruit, which is kind of fruit juice, but there they add milk, a bit of nut milk, and some cardamom. Nice! Continue across the pond with Texas in the United States. Nah, I'm just kidding. We're continuing to South America with Chile. Similar flag though, but if you put them next together, ah, you can see the difference, I guess. Now, most of us will have had some experience with moving, for good or better. All those boxes, cellar tape, plastic. I think I yet have to meet a person who really likes moving houses. Well, in the island of Chiloé, which we can find on the west coast of Chile, they have found some good solutions for that. They do Minga. Minga is a concept where you help each other and then later promise something in return. What you see on this picture is actually happening. People are moving a physical house by using poles and a lot of manpower. Now, because the picture is black and white, it may look like it's old tradition, but this is still happening today. 
And there we go. We have arrived in the most populated country in the world that everybody has heard of, China. How can we reduce China to one single fact? I could probably create a whole video about it, but what makes China unique? Is it the Great Walls of China, one of the seven world wonders? Maybe it's a lovely panda that originates there. It's the Chinese food, we can talk about Chinese tea, and we can talk about all the inventions that come from the country. But what I wanna talk to you about today is the diversity of all those people living in one single time zone. 95% of the population lives in the red area and 92% of the people living in China is part of the ethnic Han group, which is over a billion people. However, China still in absolute numbers has the biggest indigenous population in the whole world. Think about Tibetans, Zhuang, Uyghurs and many other groups living there. They total up to only 8% of the whole population. But if we put that in absolute numbers, we're talking about 112 million people. Before we move on, a little fact about the autonomous region of Chinese Taipei. You know what was invented there? Bubble tea. Welcome to the gateway of South America, Colombia, a country that is very diverse in its own way. And where can you see it better than in its music? The people from Colombia love to dance. There is cumbia and many other different music styles that originated in this country. And then we have salsa. Even though not native to Colombia, people from Colombia love salsa. There's even the self-acclaimed capital of salsa, Cali. And think about of all the artists, Shakira, Carlos Vives, J Balbi, Maluma, Juanes, and of course, Sofia Vergara. Okay, maybe not Sofia Vergara, but diverse it is, even in its nature. You can talk about the Caribbean, the rainforest, and then there is this, Caño Cristales, the river of five colors, or better known as the liquid rainbow. Because it's located in the forest, this river was only found in 1969. There is no fish that are able to live in it because of this plant, or flower rather said, that changes color every year. It appears in red, yellow, green, black, and blue. Flowers and water are also important in the island nation of Comoros, which we can find on the east coast of Africa. The islands have been largely unspoiled by tourists and on a windy day you can even smell the fragrances of Comoros. Mainly through the young young flower, this beautiful yellow flower with an incredible smell originated in the APEC region but is actually extracted in oil in Comoros, they're the number one producing nation. And the oil of this flower actually appears in the most famous fragrances around the world. Hey, and now we've arrived at the two sister states or brother states of Congo. There are two countries in the world with the name of Congo. So before dissecting them individually, let's have a little look at what the difference in name is. Well, first of all, there's the Republic of Congo with the capital city of Brazzaville. It's also named the ROC, Congo Brazzaville, or just Brazzaville. Next, we have the bigger one of the two, which is the DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo with its capital, Kinshasa, shortened to the DRC or Congo Kinshasa. So now that we know the difference between the two Congos, let's dive into the DRC. The DRC is the heart of Africa and it's also the heart of rumba music, which is influential across the continent. It also holds the biggest part of the Congo rainforest, which is home to the Okapi and the Bonobo. The Congo rainforest is so big in size that it's only smaller than the Amazon rainforest in South America. And then we have this, the biggest active lava lake in the world, where some people go out and camp. Now that's something for the real adventure. Us. Let's continue with Congo Brazzaville then, the smaller one of the two. Linguistically and culturally, both Congos are very similar, but of course there are some differences. In the Republic of Congo, most people live in the three biggest cities in the southwest area, which are connected by a train line. The rest of the country is much more remote, including Lake Tele, which we find in the top northeast. It's home to the Mokile Mnembe, which some people describe as the Loch Ness of Africa. Now, even though it's a bit dubious and there have never been official sightings, it could be that the animal actually is alive. He has a huge rainforest at his feet. So throughout the years, there have been researchers trying to find him. Maybe it's going to be you one day. Let's move across the world to Central America for Costa Rica. A country that doesn't have its own army, is politically stable, politically neutral, and overall green and full of nature. Actually, 25% of Costa Rica is protected through a national park or any other environment 
retirement goal. The country is actually also described as the Switzerland of the Americas, which makes sense, mountains, green, neutral, but I can assure you, taking a holiday to Costa Rica is much, much cheaper. Up next, we go to the west coast of Africa for Ivory Coast. Wait, what? <laughs> Yes, up next is the country of Côte d'Ivoire, and I see you thinking, wait, what? Ivory Coast starts with a different letter. So before we dive into the fact, we have to explain why people say Côte d'Ivoire, the French word in English. In the screen, you see a lot of ways that people pronounced Côte d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast in different languages, and it just became very confusing. People didn't know that they were talking about the same country. So at one point, FIVA, UN, everybody was asked to have one title and one explanation for the country, which is Côte d'Ivoire. <sighs> well, I'm happy that's out of the way. <laughs> Let's talk about Côte d'Ivoire. It's the number one producer of cocoa beans, or cacao beans, whatever you want to call them. The product behind chocolate. And this movie, Black and White in Color, is the first Oscar winner for a foreign language film in a non-English language. Very impressively, this happened in 1976. And we're back in Europe for Croatia, the country with a very beautiful nature and interesting geography. They have beautiful parks like Platvice, and they're also known for being a recording location of Game of Thrones. The kuna is the currency of Croatia until the end of the year. The name comes from the Martin. Kuna is Martin. And back in medieval times, the Martin used to be used as a currency. In the new year, however, the kuna is going to be replaced by the euro. And every country in the euro has its own emblem on one side of the coin. And for Croatia, this was going to be the Martin, the kuna. This is where the drama starts. What happened, you wonder? Well, this, a competition where the winner was gonna be the design of the new Euro. That's all nice, right? So Croatians were designing and the winner was this sign over here until the public started to compare it to a photograph from somebody else. Basically, they said it was plagiarism. Because of the drama, the winning design was pulled and then this design came up. But then there were also rumors surrounding that that was also stolen and looked too similar to another image. The story is unfolding as I was creating this video and on the day of producing it, I saw an icon of this coin. So this is most likely to be the winner of the competition. If it's not, just cancel me in the comments. I don't know, but I'm definitely gonna follow this hot topic. We're back in the Caribbean for Cuba, the island where you kind of step back into time. Would it be for the street magicians playing their music or for the cars that you see outside? Cuba is the biggest island of the Caribbean and also host to the smallest bird on earth, the bee hummingbird. This tiny critter is 5 up to 6 centimeters big and really fades away when you compare it to a full-fledged human or even an ostrich. Let's move to the Middle East for the country that is European at heart but located in Asia, the Republic of Cyprus. The country is probably best known for being split into different fractions and having a capital with a wall in the middle. Aside from that, the binding factor is the halloum me, and all over the island, if you go around, you can find shipwrecks. Seriously, there's more than a dozen shipwrecks, helicopter wrecks, and even when you stand close on the island, you can see them from the shore. And here's a picture of me trying to look cool looking at one. Next country is the one that embodies Central Europe, Czech Republic, or as it's called today, Czechia. It's a country that tops many lists when it comes to beer drinking. Well, let's just call it the beer drinking nation of the world. They really seem to like it. Aside from that, it's also the country where the main invention behind contact lenses was done, which is very good because I'm a wearer of them. And lastly, they also love mushroom hunting. <laughs> I never knew that. Hey, thank you so much for making it to Czechia. I didn't know A to letter C had so many countries already. Um, for the next countries up the list, I would like to ask your help. I did a lot of fact checking, but of course, if you have anything that is interesting in your country that hasn't been mentioned, let me know. And for the countries that have been mentioned, I did a lot of research. I worked on this project for months, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be without any error. Uh, also, this is the first time I'm creating a video like this. Maybe technically you have some tips or tricks or you think I I should use a certain kind of tool let me know in the comments below i really want to learn from you guys and i think if i would get any kind of user feedback you know that would be really cool see you in the next one we're gonna start with denmark have a good one thank you and bye bye